Oh boy, guys, I finally get to talk about the relaunch of this most amazing fragrance that had originally launched in 2005 by Jean-Paul Gaultier called Gaultier 2. Here it is. I have a bottle. I have not smelled this yet. I actually was able to get a bottle from someone I know in Paris who was selling a bottle. So I paid 100 euros for this and I'm going to let you know all about it. First impressions on camera coming right up. Thanks so much for tuning in. This is Sebastian. Yesterday I'm talking about Gautier 2 from the house of Jean-Paul Gautier. As I said, I bought this from someone I know in Paris who was selling a bottle of it and it has not been opened. This is actually like an online ex exclusive and apparently now it's actually selling in the States off the Jean-Paul Gautier website. But as of the shooting of this video, it's not currently available. The website is up, the page is there. And then it has a, a notification. You can sign up to be notified when the fragrance actually is available for purchase. So if you guys are into it, go do that. But this is a fragrance that was initially launched in 2005 and it was created by Francis Kirkjian four years before he actually launched his own brand. And, and Jean-Paul Gaultier and Francis Kirkjian did a lot of fragrances together. And I think a year after this, they launched Fleur de Mal as well. So it's kind of a floral amber fragrance, I believe, but very, very musky. From what I remember, it's been a long time since I've smelled Gautier 2, and I've been really, really anticipating getting my nose on this one. So is the new version created by Francis Kirkjian? Although most likely it is, but since he is now part of Dior, I don't think they put his name down because, you know, he's uh, the, the in-house perfumer at Dior. So most likely this still is his own creation, just modernized to uh, today's uh, standard, uh, standards. But what I think what happened was, I believe the Gautier website somewhere, there was some kind of question and answer of which fragrance they want brought back from Gautier. And I believe this fragrance uh, won and unanimously this was selected. So I think that's why this fragrance is brought back. But if any of you have gotten your nose on the relaunch let me know put a comment down what your thoughts are on it if any of you are fans of the original also let me know what your thoughts are on it the thing about this fragrance also there's a fragrance by ted lapidus called altamir which i find has similarities and then also an actual maison francis kirkjian fragrance called a poem also reminds me of the original i haven't smelled this uh, the new version yet but the original version from what i remember back in the mid 2000s both altamir and also apom reminds me of uh, the original gautier 2 and i've got a bottle of altamir and also apom myself so i get the similarity so let's go ahead and open this one up it's currently selling for 138 dollars on the gautier website the usa website i paid 100 euros for this and um it was like I said, somebody was selling a bottle and they asked me if I wanted it. And I said, yes, of course, I've been trying to get it. And in, in order to get this, uh, you had to do an online order, I believe. And that's how the USA version is happening. But mostly this fragrance does say musk, vanilla and amber on the back here. I was reading some things on Fragrantica and some people mentioned that they got the fragrance and it had different notes listed. So I don't know, we'll see how it is, but it's a unisex fragrance, by the way, and it was a unisex offering when it first came out as well, but a little something written on the Gautier USA website for Gautier 2. It says, come back to me. In 2005, Jean-Paul Gautier declared the sensuality of skin to be universal. This was no utopia. With the launch of his non-conformist Gautier 2 fragrance, Visionary Jean-Paul threw off the shackles of convention to celebrate the alchemy of gender. The fragrance trail of this Jean-Paul Gaultier perfume, madly sensual. Its promise, endless pleasure to the power of two. Three little turns and off you go. After a long absence, this marvel of sensuality is finally back. An eternal icon and as magnetic as ever, featuring perfume notes of intoxicating musk enveloping vanilla and balmy amber. In this terribly tactile treasure hunt, 
it's so good to lose yourself. So here's the box as I was showing you and this is the bottle right here. Definitely not the same bottle as before. And then this bottle also comes with that so it will protect the, the bottle from breaking or anything. Sometimes they do break. And this is not a refillable, is it a refillable? I don't think it's a refillable bottle. But very simplistic bottle as you can see in golden colored amber juice. The juice does remind me of the color of uh, Grand Soir from uh, Francis Kirchner, or Maison Francis Kirchner. Um, and on the bottom, we've got some information here. This is a, a brand that is um, working with Pouge, or that's their distributor, Pouge or Pouge. Pouge, I guess is how the Spanish say it. Uh, and uh, they, uh, they also have brands like Comme des Garcons and Carolina Herrera and various other designer brands. Jean-Paul Gaultier doesn't do much clothing anymore. I think he's strictly a fragrance house now. I guess maybe once in a while he does, but let's go ahead and smell this. But the notes are basically musk, vanilla, and amber. There might be some additional notes in this, but that's what they claim. So interesting, I'm needing to spray a little more. I remember this being like this, but I'm not smelling it very much like this. Like there's some change here for sure. When you first spray it, there's something lightly off-putting about it, but it eventually settles and becomes the actual fragrance that I remember. I felt like to me, it's a bit more, originally it's a bit more rounded. This seems a bit rough. I'm also picking up jasmine, loads of jasmine here, which they don't claim there to be any. And so this adds a bit of a floral edge to the fragrance. So they claim the musk, vanilla, and amber here. Maybe it's the musk that's kind of coming off a bit, you know, lightly indolic floral, but I feel like it's jasmine for sure. Is there ambergris here? They do claim that there's ambergris in the notes on Fragrantica, which don't match the notes of what's printed on the box. Uh, as you can see here, musk, vanilla, and amber is written right on the back. But as I was saying earlier, some people said they got other notes written on the box, and there's some discrepancies with what's being advertised on the website with what they received. So I don't know how true this is, but to me, I am getting some jasmine here for sure it's definitely reminding me of the original fragrance but initial spray was a bit off like it didn't it there was something rough about it like not so rounded like originally what i remember it was softer but a lot more potent so what i'm going to do now is spray some on and then come back uh, and let you know how it develops on my skin so let's spray some here and then uh, let's spray some here as well. So a bunch of sprays, and I'm gonna pause the video here, come back in a little bit. All right, now that I've had the fragrance on for a few hours, what I'm gonna have to be honest about is this is not reminding me of a very ambery fragrance. It's more like ambergris, whereas the effect might be there, but it's acting more ambergris-like, and it's not that warmth that I remember smelling. And maybe back then, when they had created this fragrance in the original bottle with the original formulation, it was a bit more ambery. But when I'm wearing this fragrance, it does have more of an ambergris like amber effect rather than amber created with resins and balsams and vanilla and things like that. To me, it smells better on skin than on the strip, 100%. There was something a bit off putting when I first sprayed it and smelled a bit rough and plasticky rather than well-rounded and authentic notes but on skin even with the initial blast it smelled really really great it does smell really really great but i'm not getting that really warm balsamic resinous ambery experience it's more like ambergris but there is something warm hidden under there but it doesn't have that kind of effect like let's say for example grand soir or even a, a, a palm there's very much an ambery effect there, and I don't get that here with this fragrance when I'm wearing it. Sure, it does eventually become warmer and warmer when it's settling down, 
and especially on my skin it warms up with my body chemistry and the warmth of my skin so it does sweeten up but it's definitely more ambergris and jasmine and some woody sandal woodiness rather than that whole vanillic musk amber effect that uh, the box actually claims to be right here on here. So further in the development of Gautier 2, I really pick up the signature touch of the perfumer Francis Kirkjunt in this. And I don't know, as I said, who did this. Most likely he was involved with the recreation because it was his original formula. But most likely the brand has it and they went to somebody else. Or for me, I think that Francis Kirkjian was involved in the recreation of this. That's why they haven't put the name down because he is now contracted to Dior and he can't work outside of Dior, I believe. Most likely that's the truth of it. But for sure, I get his signature touch here. Definitely from Le Mail for the original fragrance he created. And also the fact that it reminds me of Apalm. And then uh, the fact that he also created Le, uh, Fleur de Mal. All of this stuff that uh, he, he has created really kind of, you know, boils down to smelling like his original work in this as well. I feel like this is definitely a bit different than the original, but definitely very similar to the original as well. Something about it is not as ambery as I remember it, because I remember it being sweeter and more ambery balsamic with like resins and balsams and vanilla. Here I'm not getting it as much as the original but I'm liking what I'm wearing. It smells really, really fantastic. I'm so glad they brought this back because it is really a great fragrance. It definitely has that whole Francis Kirkjian touch that I really, really enjoy with the kind of the floral edge and the warmth and everything else connected together. So are there two versions of this fragrance? I'm not 100% sure. Uh, is there one that is actually really musk, vanilla, and amber as the box says? Because here, like I said, I'm not getting it. There's an ambery effect for sure, but I feel like it's the ambergris amber effect rather than amber from the resins and balsams. And very, very much so, loads of jasmine here. It, I'm picking it up. And I think it's this combination of the ambergris and jasmine that kind of reminds me of other uh, fragrances that Francis Kirkjian has created where he's combining orange blossom and amber and kind of a thing with a palm but really a great release here. I think this is definitely worth having if you like these kind of fragrances. And once it's back on the USA website, was it ever sold or is it just getting ready to be sold? Because I, did, I didn't realize this was being sold on the USA website until someone had mentioned it. But this was after I bought this and uh, you know saved uh, my bottle so I can get to a place to shoot it while I'm traveling here in Europe. But either way, I recommend this one. It's definitely a great release. It'll be $138 when it's officially selling on the Jean-Paul Gaultier USA website. So definitely worth getting and having and enjoying and kind of, you know, reminiscing of uh, how this used to smell back in uh, 2000, 2005 when it first initially launched. Anyway, happy with this purchase. Really enjoy this fragrance and let me know your thoughts on this fragrance. If you've sampled it, if you've been wearing it, what do you think about the original? What do you think about the 2022 version? Are there two versions of this fragrance? I don't really know, but maybe I'll buy another bottle. We'll see if there is another version of this. But to me, as I was saying earlier, I think this is more ambergris rather than full-on balsamic amber. When you compare the amber in this to something like Grand Soir, uh, it doesn't have that kind of honeyed touch. It's amber for sure, but I feel like it's, like I said, it's ambergris. Anyway, those are my thoughts on Gautier 2. I hope you guys get to try it. And do let me know, as I said, if you have tried this, you've compared the original to this, uh, put a comment down below so I can find out. But either way, guys, thanks so much for watching today's video. If you have any questions or comments, please list below. Please like this video. Please share it. Follow me on Instagram and Facebook. And I'll be back with more videos very soon. Have a good one. Goodbye.